Hi guys, this is Rui, and in this video, we have a new item from Big Tree Tech. And to test it, we will need a Raspberry Pi power supply, a Raspberry Pi, a USB cable, and a memory card. You want to know more? Stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! But before we start, please don't forget to hit like in this video and subscribe our channel. Also, if you like the channel and want to help out, you can join our Patreon page. Recently, Big Tree Tech released the new Pi TFT50 display. It's a 5-inch touch display and it was designed to be used together with the Raspberry Pi. Big Tree Tech also designed a graphic interface for the screen to interact with the Raspberry Pi. Inside the package, we have the traditional yellow deck and the display. They also included this small flat cable to connect the display and four small screws. And this is the display. It's very simple and does not include too many components, since all the brains will be on the Raspberry Pi. So, for the display to work, we need to buy a Raspberry Pi. It will work with the 3B, 3B+, and the 4. To power the display and the Raspberry Pi, you also need a power supply. We recommend to get one designed for the Raspberry Pi, or you might have under-voltage related issues. To connect the Raspberry Pi to the printer, you will need a USB cable. Also needed is a micro SD card to install Octoprint and the graphic environment from Big Tree Tech. Now, let's go through the installation. Start by placing the memory card in your computer. Next, download Octoprint from the official website. You can find all the links in the video description. To flash the Octoprint image to the memory card, you can use Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager. If you have a Mac, Etcher is the one you need. Open Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager, load the Octoprint image file, select the memory card and flash it. This will take a few minutes. When done, you will end up with a couple of new drives. And one of them will be named boot. Enter this drive and search for the file octopi-wpa-supplicant.txt. Here, we need to enter our Wi-Fi credentials so that the Pi can access the web. So, in the WPA settings, remove the hash symbols and type in your SSID and your Wi-Fi password. Next, add this line after the password and before the bracket. Scroll down to the end of the file and change the country code according to where you are located. Don't forget to save the file as you close it. If you plan on using a USB camera with a Pi, Open the octopi.txt file and remove the hash symbols from the camera settings. 
you can find more information about which cameras are compatible and the correct settings in Octoprint's forum. OK, save this file as well and you can now remove the memory card and insert it in the Pi's memory card slot. Now, let's assemble everything. Take the display and place it on the table with the board facing up. Then, place the Raspberry Pi over the display, with the USB connectors at the left and the flat connectors at the right. The display comes with four screws to secure it to the Raspberry Pi, but we will use standoffs instead. Next, gently pull the connector lock out and connect the flat cable with the blue stripe facing down. Make sure the flat cable is all the way in. Then, push back the lock. Now, do the same for the other connector. OK, this step is done. Big Tree Tech does not provide an enclosure or support mount, so we design our own. For this, we need some M2.5 screws and screws for plastics. Take the back cover first and with the correct orientation, place it over the pie. Use four M2.5 by six screws and secure the back cover. This cover allows the installation of a small 30x30 30 30 fan, so if you are using a Raspberry Pi 4, we recommend you to use one. Next, take the enclosure and with the small opening to the front side, place the assembly in. Use the screws for plastics to secure the back cover to the enclosure. Next, take the support mount and secure it to the back cover. OK, we have it ready to install on the printer. Just get a couple of screws and T-nuts and secure it to the printer. And this is how it looks. Now, connect the power supply and turn on the Raspberry Pi. The Pi will boot up and then it will display a bunch of text. At this point, we don't have the graphic interface yet, so we need to install it. If you set up the Wi-Fi connection correctly, you should see the IP address on the screen. So, go to your computer and open a DOS window. Then, log into the Pi by typing ssh space pi at and here you type in the IP address that was displayed on the screen and then press enter. It will ask if you want to continue, so type yes. And you really need to type yes, just Y will not work. Then type the password, which is raspberry, and hit enter again. And now you are logged in. OK, for the first step, you need to update the software, so type in sudo space apt space update and hit enter. Type in the raspberry password again and wait for it to finish the update. Now we can start installing stuff. So type sudo space apt space install space xorg and hit enter.
you will be prompt to continue, so hit Y. When that is done, type sudo space nano space slash etc slash x11 and here you need to pay attention to the capital letters. You need to type exactly like this, then slash, then x wrapper dot config and hit enter. This command will open an editor. So you need to use the arrow keys and move the cursor down and replace the console with anybody. Then press the Ctrl and O keys to save, then enter, and Ctrl and X to exit. Next, type sudo space raspi hyphen config and hit enter. Use the arrow keys once more to move the highlighted selection down to three boot options and hit enter. Then on B1 desktop, hit enter. And then B2 console auto login and hit enter. Move down and to the right and select finish and let it reboot. Now you need to wait a few seconds for the Raspberry Pi to boot up and then log in again by typing ssh space pi at and the Raspberry Pi IP address and then the password. Now we need to type sudo space nano space slash etc slash rc dot local. Hit enter and then type the password again. This will open the editor again. And this time we need to add a line at the end. So use the arrow keys and after the last echo word type enter to add a new line before the exit zero and type this line su space minus l space pi space minus c space double quotes start x space minus minus space minus no cursor and double quotes again. Then press the Ctrl and O keys to save then enter and Ctrl and X to exit. Next Type in svn space export space and then this big link. Again, make sure you type in exactly like this and pay attention to the capital letters. And hit enter. And we are almost there. Now type in dot space install dot sh and hit enter. It will now install the final things. It will prompt a few times to continue so type yes and at some point it will prompt to press Q to quit so press Q. This last step will take a few minutes so be patient and let it go through all the way. When you see the green pie at octopi words it's all done. Turn the Raspberry Pi off and connect the USB cable from the Pi to the printer. Turn the Pi on again and let it boot up. Then you will see the graphic environment on the screen. And at the lower right corner you will see the connection status. On the main screen you can open the files you want to print. In here you can access the Pi's memory and the printer's memory card. In control you have lots of buttons. At the left you can home each axis. At the center you can move each axis. These are for the X, these are for the Y and these are for the Z. This one will home the X and Y axis together. And the arrows are for the baby steps to adjust the Z height while printing the first layer. At the bottom are the steps to move the axis and the extruder. We can move in 1, 5, 10, 50 and 100 mm steps. The filament can be pushed or pulled by these two buttons here. And this button will trigger the leveling sequence. At the right we have the home button where it homes all the axes. Then we have the button to disable the stepper motors. 
Then we have a button to preheat the nozzle up to 200 degrees C and the bed up to 60 degrees C. At the side is the button to turn the heaters off. And finally are the buttons to restart the Pi and shut down the Pi. At the top corner we have the settings menu. In there you can set up the Wi-Fi connection and we have a terminal to send Linux commands. These are very hard to go into. We need to touch it several times to enter each option. Like any Octoprint installation, you can connect a USB camera, but the display interface is currently not working with the camera. If you want to view the camera's image, you need to access the Pi using the internet browser in your computer by typing the IP address on the address field. Here you have the Octoprint environment which allows you to upload files, control the printer and install plugins. On the display's main screen and if you tap on the temperatures you can access a submenu to control the hot end and heat pad temperatures as well as the feed rate and flow rate values. To load a file and start a print you can use the Octoprint's web interface load from a USB flash drive or load from the Pi's memory or printer's memory card. Then select the file you want to print, go back and tap on print. Then you will be prompt with the question if you want to start the print of the selected file. With a clean installation of Octoprint and OctoBTT, we didn't notice any lag issues except when using an SKR Mini E3 board. This printer would stop several times along the print for a second. This issue was related with the serial port definition in the firmware. We had the first serial port defined as 2, so we had to change to minus 1. And the second serial port was defined as minus 1, so we changed to 2. Once we changed that, we had no more lags. Some other things like baud rate or USB buffer can cause this lag. So check your firmware if you notice this issue. We notice one more problem, this time related with the probe Z offset. If we tap on the leveling button, the Pi sends the command to start the auto level sequence. When done, we see a setting stored message on the screen. And if we recheck our offset value, it's gone and changed to zero. So until Big Tree Tech fixes this, don't use the leveling button. Other than that, the display and interface work well, but we feel that this could be a lot better. The main screen is always the same, if it's on idle or printing. It would be much better if we could see a graphic with the temperatures while printing, for example. And the control menu is a mess with all the buttons all mixed up in the single submenu. It would be a lot better if there were more menus with all these buttons divided in them and better organized. The X, Y and Z move buttons have these futuristic arrow icons, but it would be more user friendly if they also had the X's letters and maybe the plus and minus signs. Also, the baby steps move too much. These steps for the first layer adjustment need to be much smaller. Since the Big Tree Tech display does not provide with all the options that the printer stock display has, like access to the steps, jerk, acceleration and so on, the stock display is still needed, so you will end up with two displays on your printer. So what do you guys think about this new display for the Raspberry Pi by Big Tree Tech? Let us know in the comment section below. And that's it you guys, we will see you guys next time. Until then, bye!